Hello guys, uh, as you can see I just got back from work. Uh, part of uh, a significant part of my job working in the court is to wait. I mean minutes after minutes, hours after hour, you need to wait for the judge, wait for your next case, just hours and hours. So I'm actually a professional waiter, just wait. And why are you waiting in order to uh, kill your boredoms, right? So you need to keep your mind occupied. So I was just deliberating on the topic of today. Um, just like to like to share it from with you. Um, maybe see what your thoughts are. Namely, uh, it's about uh, my observation on the uh, contemporary Chinese society. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about. Uh, Contemporary Chinese society, for all of you that are uh, interested and curious about what is it really like in contemporary Chinese society? I mean, superficially, it is uh, what, what you see, but analytically, I want to just give a, a, a brief observation, uh, analysis. I'm going to approach it from a, a sociological aspect, the political aspect, cultural aspect, economic aspect, and military aspect, and other miscellaneous aspects. I mean, sociologically speaking, contemporary China is actually divided into three worlds. Unlike real advanced uh, countries like United States, Western Europe, and Japan, it's mainly divided into just two worlds. It's the, just the, the elite and then the, the, the rest of the citizen. Uh, but in China, it's actually three worlds, or three tiers. And um, on the top, it's the elite. And I don't have a statistic um, uh, numbers, but they probably just, um, they'll be less than 1%. And they comprise of the, the rich, the business people, the socialites, um, celebrities, and government bureaucrats. And um, they often probably collude with each other and engage in their, their things. And they pretty much live apart from the rest of uh, the society. So you probably only see them on TV and you probably don't even see them at all because they don't take the mass trans transportations. <laughs> and then they're the people what I consider as the, the pseudo-aristocrat of today. And the second world of contemporary China is um, what I consider as the urbanites, really just the city dweller. As uh, China starts to modernize and build up a lot of cities and top tier cities such as Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, Canton, you name it, along the coastal areas. But but lately there's uh, major cities built up like Chengdu, uh, Chongqing. Um, they're they're the, 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 the average citizen. Uh, and they're, they're just the, the regular citizen that you see. Um, a significant part of them are, is uh, what I consider as the, um, the novel plebeians. Because what they do for the lack of imagination is that um, they try to mimic the rich, the elite. Just try to mimic them. And, um, and they're the people you see around you if you live in the city. And, uh, and then they're the, the, the third part, the third world in contemporary Chinese society, which is the uh, majority, the major part. There, I'll, I'll think there will be like uh, three quarter of the pie of the whole population, and namely they're the peasants, and uh, <clears throat> they're really the invisible ones. I'll, I'll I'll say, and you you probably do see them, but they really don't exist. Like, and significant part of the peasants have left their land and. Uh, and uh, go into the city and become construction workers. So uh, they're building all the buildings that you see that rise up in China are, are, coming, are built by them, but you don't really see them. I mean, you probably see them, but they don't really exist in your world. So that's a sociological aspect of China, and that just touched upon uh, the economic re reality of China is that, um, um, like, I, like uh, associated with what I said earlier, uh, the top tier, the elite, uh, really make the, the rich of the rich, the cream of the crop. And average citizens, not making that much because, um, and, and, the, and the, uh, the peasants are really making meager, meager living. So 
this just uh, correlates to what they say that China's become richer and richer. I mean, China as a nation state is become richer, and they will surpass the United States. It will surpass the United States, but average Chinese citizen is not rich, especially by and large the peasantries, and they're making meager, meager livings. And this is why they will continue to try their best to be smuggled out of China because livelihood in China is just deplorable. And they're still preferably to be, want to be smuggled to the United States and make their uh, new life <laughs> because their living in China is just, they're in the bottom of the bottom. Uh, it's, it's no fun to be poor, in, especially in China. <laughs> it's okay to be poor in the United States, right? <laughs> so this is a, a very important part. Uh, politically speaking, China is uh, continually going to be uh, ruled by the Chinese Com Communist Party, which is really a, the, 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 the sole dictatorship of China. And, and they comprise around <laughs> uh, 80 million of, of um, car-carrying party members uh, who are really the stooges of the whole government. I'll, I'll say uh, they're so boring. This is why on TV, the, although they always broadcast the news and this is why you see China's uh, politics is so boring, so boring. And um, unlike uh, the real politics in, in, in a democracy, Chinese, China has really, China has no politics. Really, China just has just, is just ruled by the party and this is why it's boring. There's no real politicking going on. Um, all right, culturally speaking, uh, China, since it's a uh, uh, re economic reform since 1978 launched by Deng Xiaoping uh, it really saw its boom in the uh, 80s and the 90s and um, especially in the arts I'm talking about movies rock and rolls arts paintings music uh, etc etc uh, literatures etc but somehow since the 21st century it just started to get stifled and this is this is just not happening these days and things get repetitive and the same old platitude banalities just get repeated over and over and this is why these days China does not produce any any, any exciting stuff anymore because um, somehow it just it reaches plateau and, and just and that's it and uh, there's nothing really going on in terms of novel imaginations uh, uh, things like that so, this is uh, just my observation on uh, Chinese, uh, contemporary Chinese society. So, even though, um, while it will continue to grow economically and technologically, but um, you don't really see much interesting things going on in China these days. And also, militarily speaking, um, China is expanding and modernizing its uh, military. Um, but my take is that... Uh, it's by and large uh, just for um, deterrence purposes. Uh, that's about it. And and um, and I won't say it's going to go launch any major wars or anything like that. And for all the uh, warmonger, uh, the China scare people in the West, I think uh, they're really doing this charade just to uh, build up its own uh, military industrial complex and it's just to make more money. And it's, it's pure business. And... Uh, and lots of drama, and uh, lots of bluffings, <laughs> and, and this is what diplomacy and military show-off is really about. So, this is my take on contemporary China. Thank you for watching, and leave your comments below see what do you think about contemporary Chinese society.